This is the second video of equilibrium analysis in economics. In the first video, uh, we have discussed partial equilibrium. In partial equilibrium, it was an equilibrium of only one commodity in the market. And now, in this video, we will discuss general equilibrium, an equilibrium which includes all commodities in the market. In general equilibrium analysis, we are talking about multiple commodities, all commodities in the market. For example, uh, when we have n commodities in the market, so the requirement for equilibrium should be that the excess demand is equal to zero or the quantity demanded uh, subtracted by the quantity supplied should be equal to zero. We can also say that the requirement for equilibrium is that the quantity demanded should be equal to the quantity supplied which applies to all commodities. Uh, commodity one, commodity two and all other commodities until the end commodity. Uh, for example, when we have two commodities in the market, so we have uh, two commodity market model, uh, the requirement for equilibrium will apply not only to commodity one, but also to commodity two. So, uh, the quantity demanded for commodity one should be equal to the quantity supplied for commodity one. Uh, there is no excess demand in commodity one. The same thing should be uh, found in commodity 2. The excess demand in commodity 2 should also be equal to zero. The quantity demanded for commodity 2 subtracted by the quantity supplied for commodity 2 should be equal to zero. We should also pay attention to the equation here. The equation for demand here is not only a function of the price of uh, commodity one, but also a function of the price of commodity two. So uh, we can see here if the price of commodity two increases because the sign here is positive, the quantity demanded for commodity one will also increase. So we have uh, substitution here. When the price of commodity 2 increases, the quantity demanded of commodity 1 will also increase. So, for example, we can use uh, transportation by train and transportation by bus, for example. When the price of uh, transportation by bus increases, when the price of transportation by bus increases, it will make people to want less transportation by bus. So, uh, the transportation by bus will be replaced by transportation by train. So, the quantity demanded for transportation by train will increase. So, uh, the transportation by train is a substitute for the transportation by bus. The same relationship, similar relationship can also be found in the equation for the quantity demanded for uh, the second commodity here. See here that the quantity demanded for commodity 2 is a function of not only the price of this commodity, but also the price of the other commodity. Qt2 equals 15 plus P1. So we, we can find P1 here and also P2, of course. This is an example of a two commodity market model. In the previous slide, we have discussed a two commodity market. Uh, the relationship that we have seen in the previous example, in the previous slide, was uh, substitution. Another possible relationship is complementary. For example, uh, we can use uh, CD and CD player in the market. Uh, when the price of CDs uh, increases, 
so it will make people to want less CDs. So uh, it also means that people want to have less CD players. So when the price of CDs uh, increases, the quantity demanded for CD player will decrease. So the relationship is complementary. Let's continue uh, discussing the example from the previous, previous slide. Uh, from the equation from the previous slide, uh, we know that the requirement for equilibrium is uh, the quantity demanded should be equal to the quantity supplied. Both uh, commodities should uh, have uh, zero excess demand. So this is for commodity one, this is for commodity two. Uh, quantity demanded quantity supplied, quantity demanded, quantity supplied. And then we can solve these equations to find uh, the price for commodity one uh, as well as the price for commodity two. Uh, we can simplify this to find these equations, simplify this to find this equation, and then to eliminate one of the variables we multiply the first equation with 3 and then multiply the second with 1 and then we can find these equations so we can eliminate the P2 we can eliminate the price of commodity 2 so that we can find the P1 we can find the price for commodity 1 which is 3.71 and then after knowing the P1 we can substitute the P1 into one of the equations here to find P2. So P2 is equal to 6.57. And then after knowing P1 and P2, we can substitute the P1 and P2 into the uh, demand and supply equations from the previous slide. So that we can find the Q1 is 9.14 and Q2 is 12.14. So these are the results of the equilibrium, the general equilibrium analysis, which in our example includes only two commodities, uh, the P1, P2, Q1 and Q2. And of course, uh, we can use these equations to find uh, the graphs of these uh, equations in the market. So, in general, when we have n commodities in the market, we can find what is called Walrasian type of general equilibrium model. In this model, excess demand for every commodity is a function of the prices of all commodities in the market. So the conditions for equilibrium is, of course, it is basically the same as what we have discussed in the previous slide of a two commodity market. The quantity demanded subtracted by the quantity supplied should be equal to zero. So the excess demand the excess demand for each commodity should be equal to zero because we have n commodities so we have n equations and then we also have uh, equations for the demand equations for the demand the quantity demanded as a function of the price of the commodity itself and also the prices of all other commodities so we have n equations for demand and n equations for the supply. So totally we have n equations plus n equations plus n equations. So we have totally three n equations. And then the next step is substituting the equations here, the equations of the demand and the supply into the conditions here. So the QD1 here is replaced by this demand equations the QS here is replaced by the supply equations. So what we have is these equations now. The quantity demanded subtracted by the quantity supplied is equal to zero because we have n equations. So totally we have n equations. 
Okay. Also, we can say that uh, the excess demand, because it is the quantity demanded uh, subtracted by the quantity supplied, so basically it is uh, the excess demand, is a function of all prices in the market. Because we have n commodities, so we have n equations. And then the last step to find the equilibrium is solve this equation simultaneously. The same thing as we have done in the previous slide for the two commodity market model. So finally we can find after solving this equation uh, simultaneously, we can find the prices, the equilibrium prices and the equilibrium quantities in the market for all commodities. Another thing that we should also know is that solution does not always exist. For example, when the equations are inconsistent, no solutions will exist. Uh, we can see here the x plus y equals 8, while in the second equation x plus y equals 9. They are not consistent, so solutions are not possible. Uh, another example is uh, about these two next equations. We can see here the first equation is 2x plus y equals 12, while the second 4x plus 2y equals 24. The second equation is twice the first. So uh, the second is redundant because basically the second is the same as the first, only uh, the second is multiplied by 2. So uh, the second equation is not independent from the first equation. Okay, so uh, what we can see here is uh, functional independence does not exist. When functional independence does not exist, uh, we cannot find a unique solution. What we can find is infinite number of solutions because uh, basically this, the second equation here is the same as the first. So uh, the solutions are infinite infinite number of solutions because uh, we cannot find uh, functional independence. So uh, as a conclusion, uh, when consistency and functional independence exist, we can find a unique solution like uh, the next example here. 2x plus 3y equals 58 y equals 18 and then x plus y equals 20. Uh, they are consistent and uh, functional independence can be found in this example. So a unique solution uh, can be found from the model. We have a simple exercise here. It is an exercise uh, about uh, partial uh, equilibrium in the market. So we have only one commodity here. This is the demand equation. This is the supply equation. And in A, please find the equilibrium price and quantity in this market. Okay. And then uh, in B, please graph the demand and supply in a diagram, in one diagram, and so the equilibrium point. But uh, please remember that in this B here, the quantity is on the vertical axis and the price on the horizontal. And then in C, graph the demand and supply in one diagram and so the equilibrium point, but now the P is on the vertical axis and the quantity on the horizontal axis. And this is the answer for question E. To find equilibrium, the condition is the quantity demanded should be equal to the quantity supplied. This is the demand, this is the supply. And then we can solve the price 
the price is equal to 2 and then we can substitute this uh, price equals 2 to the demand or the supply then we can find the quantity the quantity is equal to 6 and so the conclusion is the price in equilibrium for this market is equal to 2 and the quantity in equilibrium is 6 this is the diagram for question B uh, we can see here the quantity is on the vertical and the price is on the horizontal axis okay and this is the equation for the supply so we can find the graph for the supply here and we can also see here that when the price is zero the quantity is minus 14 when the quantity is zero the price is 1.4 here and this is the equation for the demand when the price is 0 the quantity is 18 and when the quantity is 0 the price is 3 and the intersection between the supply and the demand is at this point so this point is called the equilibrium point and from our calculation from the previous slide we have found that the equilibrium price is 2 and the equilibrium quantity is 6 and we can also see that uh, we have a test line here uh, it is made in test line because uh, it is not relevant to use negative quantities of output okay so it is in test line it is in test line and it is also not relevant to talk about negative price in this example so it is made in this line so the relevant part of the graph is only on the solid line, solid line here and this is the equilibrium this is the diagram for question C now uh, the price is on the vertical and the quantity is on the horizontal everything else is the same uh, this is the demand this is the supply but remember that because now the price is on the vertical so this is not the uh, equation for the supply but this is the inverse of the equation for the supply the same thing for the demand this is the inverse uh, of the equation of the demand uh, this is the same uh, equilibrium price the same equilibrium quantity the same intercept 18 the same intercept minus 14 1.43 so the only thing different is on the axis uh, in economics uh, often we use this kind of uh, illustration for the market of a commodity so the price is on the vertical and the quantity on the horizontal